It's like forgiveness. People read about forgiveness, but they don't practice forgiveness. People read about visualization, but they don't practice visualization. People read about, you know, mindset techniques like writing a life story, but then they don't use their life story. People build vision boards, but they don't use vision boards. They, they write declarations, but they don't use their declarations. People watch and read books about exercise, but they don't exercise. I don't want to be, you know, the kind of coach for you that is shallow. And I don't want to be the kind of coach that leaves you as like a carbon copy of other coaches out there in the world. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm trying to, you know, put too much in front of you. Maybe I'm trying to take you too far, but I guess that's just how I am. I'm going to give you the layers and we're going to every single week talk about the layers and we're going to awaken your gifts and talents to serve people. That's what we're going to do. We're going to layer on what you're learning, going to layer your understanding. We're going to awaken your gifts and talents that may be still sleepy, you know, and it's just in there kind of working, but not quite working. For example, everybody, every person on this planet has empath skills. The more you focus on wanting to help somebody, that empath side of you comes to the surface. Your empath skills are not set. They're based upon your desire to help another person solve or create what they're working on. The more you want to help somebody, the more that gift emerges and it comes to the surface. So we're the ones who calls that forward or has it come up and gets stronger and stronger and stronger based upon our desire. Now, let's say, let's say you think you're stupid and let's say you think that you don't have any skill. Well, you, with that kind of thinking, will shut down your gifts and talents. You'll collapse them and they will implode. And you, you could actually, by thinking you're stupid and thinking you're worthless and thinking you don't have anything to, to give people, you can actually turn off your gifts and talents and literally just shut them down. But it's not because somebody else did that. You did that. And I've seen people do that. I've seen people like literally be so critical on themselves that they literally pull themselves apart so much that they literally take their gift and their talent that, that they have, because everybody has one. Everybody's got a gift and talent that they can use to be able to improve their life and improve other people's lives. But once you start tearing yourself apart, you're going to tear yourself up on the inside with your gift and talent, and it will be gone. You can destroy it. You can. Just like you can destroy another person just like you can destroy a relationship because you know you have the power. You can destroy any relationship. You can destroy hope in somebody else's mind. You can destroy a house. You can destroy a car. You could destroy a person. You can destroy dreams. You have the power to go super dark and to like ruin things. And you need to be conscious of that, that you have the power to literally destroy yourself. And that power is in you. Every person has the power to destroy. And it's not that far away. It just sits there. But if you tap into that and you get super critical on yourself and start pulling yourself apart, 
you will ruin your gifts and talents and you will implode and become a very nasty person. And then you will turn bad or implode and then do something terrible. Seriously, you, you need, need to be conscious of that. So as much as you can do that and destroy yourself, you also have the same power to build yourself. If you were to imagine this, hear me out on this. Let's take your flesh and have it be one part of you. And let's take your soul and have it be the other part of you. So you got two parts, flesh and you got soul. Now over here in flesh, this is your body. This is your organs. This is your brain. It's all your flesh. Over here is your soul, which is your intelligence, inspiration, your wisdom, all that good stuff, right? Is over here in your soul. And then here's your flesh. Some people, some people, their flesh runs their life. Their flesh runs their life. Their flesh makes all the decisions. And usually people who have their flesh run their life are usually pretty miserable because the flesh is always hungry. It wants more. It wants more. It wants more. It's never satisfied. It always wants more. It's greedy. It's hungry. It just wants to be fed. It wants to be comfortable. It wants, it just always got stuff. It's always very, 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 very needy because, and it need, and that's very true because it's, it, it, you need to feed it and you need to take care of it, but it has a lot of appetites that need to be taken care of. So it's very demanding, very, very, very all about its survival. So it can come across as needy. The soul over here has a lot of intelligence and it, it can perceive things. It can sense things. It can notice things. If you're somebody who your life is run by your soul, and your soul runs your body, you're somebody who is a creator. And you're about building things, creating things, pulling things together, making things happen. That's a creator. Over here, if your flesh runs your soul, you're going to be miserable. You're going to end up by yourself. You're going to pull away and you're going to do little by a little or less and less and less and less till you literally have no activity. When the flesh runs the when it runs your life, it doesn't want to burn calories at all. It just wants to just do nothing. When your soul runs the show, it wants to get going. It's like, let's go. Let's make this happen. And then your flesh kicks in and goes, wait, what are you doing? And you're like, well, I'm going to do this. And the flesh goes, but wait, we could get hurt. We, we might, I don't know. I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't know. And so the gas pedal is usually run by the soul. And the brake pedal is usually run by the flesh. So you got gas pedal, brake pedal. So you got the soul going, let's go. And you got the flesh going, wait, urch. <laughs> it's the brake pedal. And so... The, the plan is, is to be in your soul teaching your flesh how to live. That's the plan. Be in your soul, come from your soul, and teach your flesh what it can do because the flesh it, it has its subconscious programming like how to run the organs you know how to run your liver your kidneys your gut your digestive system your all your immune system it it, 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 it how you know it, it has its functions in the subconscious but other than that it doesn't have much 
So your flesh, just like when you grew up as a little kid, you had to be taught how to do things, you know, how to walk, well, how to crawl, how to walk, you know, how to get dressed, how to brush your teeth, how to comb your hair, how to ride a bike, how to talk, how to do math, how to pick up your toys. You've been taught a lot of things as you've been growing up because the flesh doesn't know these things. But now as you've gotten older and, and you have some wisdom, you kind of forget that your flesh still needs to be trained on how to up-level, how to get better. Most people who struggle, I notice they have a common thread, a commonality amongst people who are struggling and they can't move forward. There's a common common thread amongst all these people they have small to almost zero training to their flesh they don't teach themselves how to be better it's like somewhere around 19 20 21 years old the teaching of the flesh, how to be better, kind of starts to dissolve. By the time of 25, 26, 27 years old, most people now act like they know everything and they act like they have enough skills to carry them through the rest of their life. And so they don't really work on skills. They just go off whatever they have. And so that intelligence and that flesh ability is limited on what it can do it's limited and so people go read books and they go watch videos and they think because they're smarter that they're actually going to do better but they don't there's a small percentage that does it's about 10 percent 12 percent can actually learn and they actually just already just do better but the other 80 to 90 percent no they got to practice what they learned and so when i see people who are stuck who can't move forward it's that they lack a skill they lack an ability and that's the common thing i see is that they somewhere along the way they figured they're smart enough but they actually can't do it <laughs> 